a big uh, discrete variation link with um, algebraically closed residue field. It could be when the class number of the CM field is divisible by P, this W could ramify at P uh, because I take a branch projecting down to some, but it's a discrete variation ring. And um, then I take a CM field of degree twice D. So the D is the degree of the maximum real field. And I write C for complex conjugation. And um, then I take a CM type. So it's just a half of the field embeddings. But I suppose that this is a periodic CM type in the sense that the, the corresponding periodic variations, I mean the periodic places, are also disjoint. Okay? This means that the abelian variety of CM type sigma is having an ordinary good reduction. So this is an ordinary con ordinality condition. And then I take an ideal, fractional ideal of this CM field M uh, that is prime to P. And then I raise the power to I mean, cross number. Then I get um, some generator. Then I just define bracket of A sigma to be just um, I take a log of alpha to kill this raising power h, I divide by h, and they take the exponential. So I'm just projecting to p for finite part. Of course, this depends on the choice of alpha. But if you choose um, some integers couples like that, indexed by sigma, uh, I'm a CM type, and a positive integer k, and I just make a product like this, then the product itself is independent of the choice of alphas. So that I write this bracket, diamond bracket of A to the minus k sigma minus kappa one minus c. And that's the, basically the value of the Hegel characters. Okay, I go too much. Um, so I consider the Hegel character uh, sending ideal A to that value. This is a well-defined P power conductor Hecke character. And um, K and kappa is sort of variables. And um, then, you know, there's a periodic Hecke L function constructed by Nick Katz. And um, that gives rise to a power series of D plus one variable. The Capital X is a cyclotomic variable, and T's are anti-cyclotomic. And um, then I just fix a generator of the USR algebra, I mean generator of the group gamma, one plus P Z P. My prime is odd, okay, so one plus P is enough. Then I plug in just this raising the power gamma to the kappa sigma minus one and gamma to the k minus one into the power series. Then you get basically the periodic L value and that's the interpolation property of Katz periodic L. And here this, um, the, the omega is the Nelon period, uh, periodic or Archimedean. And um, uh, I write this round W the, the discrete variation ring algebraic one, the intersection with this capital W with Q bar, and star is sort of the gamma factors and um, epsilon factors, and uh, sort of modifying Euler factor is given like this. This is just I'm copying from the paper of Katz in 78. Okay. Then the, as you know, the mu invariant is just um, power of p exactly dividing this power series in the power series ring. Mu is a rational number, w could be ramified. But anyway, I try to prove that this mu is actually zero. So that's the sort of even Sauer's conjecture of vanishing mu invariant, but it is applied to this cat's periodic. Uh, this, you have uh, many variables so if you specialize this uh, periodic function, say some of the one variables, it could be, could positively, you know, mu could be positive. I really need this, at least this T, T's, I mean the D variable I need. 
so actually what I, 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 don't, I don't so much like to explain all the Hilbert modular similar variety things. So I, I would just assume that M is an imaginary quadratic field and uh, or having odd class number because I don't like the ambiguous classes. And for simplicity, I just assume that integer ring of the imaginary quadratic field having just plus minus one, that's a unit. And um, I also try to kill three. Three also I need to take some care. It's a kind of funny, but the difficulty of proof either the big CM field or imaginary quadratic field, it doesn't matter. It's the same sort of difficulty. So the, I think it's sufficient to explain things in imaginary quadratic case. So I recall the, the beauty of this elliptic modular things. You have a nice Eisenstein series. In the Hilbert modular case, you have a lot of off Eisenstein series. And um, you know, if you, this is a function of lattices. L is just a lattices in C. And uh, if you multiply um, some complex number alpha, it comes out by just alpha to the minus k because of it's just sum of 1 over L to the k. Then, as you know, by Weierstrass, this has a Weierstrass equation, where this gives rise to an elliptic curve that is embedded by Weierstrass p function into projective space dimension 2. And um, its invariant differential is just generated by du, u is the complex variable, I mean the variable in the complex plane. If we want to recover this L, you just make a integration, take a period lattice of this uh, elliptic curve. So actually this is a function of the pair of elliptic curve and uh, invariant differential. Okay. So Here's a sort of geometric definition of modular form. It is a functorial rule from the functor classifying these two pairs of elliptic curves and invariant differentials into the affine space as a functor over the schemes. And um, it has to satisfy this um, weight k condition. And omega is the invariant differential generating over A of this uh, invariant differential shapes. Okay, so this Eisenstein series, if you compute Q expansion, then its coefficient, as everybody knows, has a very simple expression, and uh, it is defined over Q. I'm going a little too fast. So I'm just take a left. <laughs> As you know, the, 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 the Eisenstein series, these coefficients are fairly simple sum of divisors if n is positive. <coughs> but its constant term is a Bernoulli numbers, and the Bernoulli numbers by von Staudt theorem could have a denominator. So I need to remove the constant term, at least, to make it integral, defined over this round W. So I actually remove everything uh, or p coefficient. So that's the actually level p to the square. And you can make a quite easy formula of writing this down as a linear combination of these three Eisenstein series. And um, so actually, strictly speaking, I need to add this is a function of triples, actually, x and the cyclic group of order p square, but I just forget about that. So I just look like it, it's a function of x and omega, but there's actually another information there. Then if this is defined over this round w, I mean, in this case, if this is rational, you can write down the while stress equation, in particular, when the lattice is an ideal, fractional ideal prime to P of the imaginary quadratic field, then the wire stress equation is given like that. I pick uh, this omega infinity, the, the Nelon period. It, it's kind of easy because I just plug in the integer ring into this, and then I define this as 
just a period integral like this. And this is the just a neuron period. And it works well for any Gothic A's, okay? as long as A is prime to P. So then this is actually these G2, G3, it is also the value of Eisenstein series are in this integral ring. All right, so if you plug in this, this is well defined something over W, the value is in W. But on the other hand, to relate it to L value, you need to really take this complex A, that the differential is du, complex uh, uniform, uniformizer u, you use. So this is omega infinity times of uh, the u will be this omega because of by this definition. So actually this ratio is integral. Then you just, by definition of this uh, Eisenstein series, you get a partial L function, right? Because this alpha to the minus k, and I just plug in lambda of zero k. Well, strictly speaking, I, I have this diamond bracket, so I have to suppose this, but that doesn't too much matter. So you get a partial L function. This is a good sign. Then, um, the main idea is just writing down this uh, periodic L function. It, it, you have a variables, and I want to make this power series, oh, make this power series, somehow I want to compute this as a Taylor expansion of one modular form at this CM point, so XO, well, actually. And um, on the other hand, I could easily compute the Q expansion of Eisenstein series. And if Q expansion doesn't vanish, the T expansion doesn't vanish, uh, and modulo P, uh, and that would give uh, vanishing of mu. That was the naive idea I had uh, when I was a graduate student. But that's not so easy, actually. And that I soon realized uh, in, in, in the late 80s, uh, it's not go that easy way, but anyway, I try, okay? So anyway, by Shimura's computation, use the, this invariant differential operator on the, on the modular curve. Then if you apply this iteration you do in this way, then this, alpha to the minus k basically gets to this. Of course, first you need to plug in the alpha you need to consider as a variable and then apply this and then specialize to this latest a you do. Then you get the same sort of formula. There's a one problem because the main point is just I have this modular form. I want to have this guy, the L function only, but I have this funny factor there. That causes a trouble because L value is interpolated, but this guy is not appearing in cat periodic L. In other words, I have to somehow kill this. And, and that I realized in the early 80s. Um, <coughs> then how you can kill? That's the one thing. The other thing is that you could have a class number positive. I mean, bigger than one, then it's not just a one point evaluation, but you have a several point evaluation. So you can't really compare the, the Taylor expansion one point uh, and the Q expansion thing. So I need to solve these two problems. Okay, so first I have this mismatch of the factor, and um, also I have many points I, I, I want to evaluate. So that I need to somehow solve. So this mismatch can be solved just by applying some sort of automorphism of a similar variety, at least local, alpha medium. So I just take a basis of all the integer ring. Then I embed this imaginary quadratic field by the regular representation, like this. So it's an embedding of M into M2 real, or you can think this as an embedding of 
ideal group into the ideal of GL2. Okay? And uh, you know, I will explain later that if you consider this modular curve as a sort of similar variety, the, the, the similar curve, then this Adel action you have, this is algebraic action. Automorphism of similar variety is big. Uh, the, the, that's a similar reciprocity. And um, you can bring this, um, if you pick the ideal generator of this idea, then you apply this inverse to A, or you apply this side, you bring things to XO. This basically solves the, the, this many point problem. Okay, so I just apply this operation to Eisenstein series. Another, this mismatch of this factor, you know, the modular curve is usually realized as a quotient of the upper half plane, but you can think that GL2 as a sort of unitary group of signature 1, 1, then you can realize the action on the bounded unit disk. This upper half plane is a bounded symmetric domain. Um, therefore, I can take a parameter, the unitary sort of parameter, centered at this point of, of, of this of this uh, elliptic curve, such that the action is just um, this anti-cyclotomic projection of your alpha. This alpha could be a rational, I mean, element of this imaginary quadratic field, or its infinite component, the complex numbers. So I make this. I can regard this. I have two embeddings of Q bar into C cross and Q bar into periodic field. So I can make a variable change. And because of this differential, I mean, chain rule kills this out. This minus to decay shows up before, right? Here you have minus to decay. And now you have to the plus k kappa power, so it kills out, and you get exactly the, the, this L value. That's good, but this is a transcendental operation. You lose that this composite is not a modular form. Okay, so you need to do this periodically. So you have a theotate deformation parameter around this complex. So this is XO is the pair of the CM elliptic curve capital XO and omega O. And uh, I consider this as a point of this similar curve. Then this parameter T, its log behaves like Z. In other words, if you compose, now this alpha is a periodic numbers, uh, this row alpha, then you get this alpha 1 minus t in the exponent. So if you take log alpha to the 1 minus c comes out as just a linear way. Then this, by this theotate theory, the, the infinitesimal neighborhood having this coordinate t, and that is isomorphic to gm hat in a canonical way. So you have an invariant differential of gm hat. And by cats, this invariant differential is related to um, the similar differential operator in the following way. You know, I have this omega p, I have omega o, and um, well, I might, I have forgot, <coughs> forgotten to define omega, but it, it's something like, you know, omega o is omega infinity du and it is omega p uh, dt over t also, right? This t is not a theotate coordinate, but this is this elliptic curve xo formally completed at origin is again isomorphic to gm because it is ordinary. So this t I'm actually taking, and this is a Nelon period. So you divide this value by periodic error function value, then it is actually given by this way, by using this cat's operator. 
evaluated at 1. 1 means actually z0, so it is xo, this z0 you are evaluating. Then this is actually equal to the complex guy. And um, therefore, by the evaluation formula I gave, I get basically this complex L value. So that's how Katz constructed periodic L function. So what I need to do is to look at this funny function. It's not really a modular form. I think I have this transcendental operation here. But anyway, it's sort of well defined and given the power series. And that power series is basically that Iwasawa is L. So I need to use this T expansion principle and the Q expansion principle. So each irreducible component uh, modulo P of prime to P similar curve has cusp S. Uh, it's uh, basically the strong approximation theorem. And um, therefore, you can expand it into the Q expansion. So it's a usual free expansion. Then, on the other hand, around this XO, you have this theatate coordinate. And because this I is irreducible even modulo P, so you have um, this, whatever expansion you use, you can measure the uh, it's the p divisibility if you take mod p modular form. Okay. Then using this uh, capital T is small t minus one, and <coughs> you can think that this is a power c is at t, a and this if it is characteristic zero, then this value is just a Taylor expansion. It is defined by this 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 derivatives. So here's uh, something I really need. It's so-called independence theorem. I have actually a, uh, this class group is, I sort of made it work, but this is a class group of the conductor P um, order. So it actually conductor P included because I have this bracket things there. So it, 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 it's still transcendent somehow, these guys. And um, if you plug in, you pick uh, some real honest modular form indexed by these classes. And suppose this is non-constant. And then you make this uh, transcendental operation then they are linearly independent. Well, actually, it is algebraically independent. When I was invited here, the, 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 I didn't think that I would explain this. But the, the, the organizer suggested me to do, so I agreed. Uh, and the reason is that about 20 years ago, um, the, the, I was in Paris in 1990, and Richard invited me to Cambridge, and I, I made a conjecture of this kind, if he remembers well, I don't know. That's the unique lecture. I didn't have any theorem uh, in my life. Although I had a sort of, I was young, I was confident, and I thought that I could prove this within a couple of years. So I thought this is a theorem, almost, I thought. Then it took about 20 years to prove it. Uh, and I felt all the time a little guilty making such a stupid lecture. Uh, 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 and um, so that's quite a motivation for me to try hard to prove this. Um, okay, so how you can prove this kind of stuff? So of course you apply this to this set of Eisenstein series. And then if you believe this theorem, then because it is algebraically independent, you can just measure if actually one guy in this FA, I mean this Eisenstein series, doesn't vanish modulo P in, that, in the sense that its Q expansion doesn't vanish modulo P, then you win. In other words, mu is given like that, for any of them actually, okay. 
And you know, this Eisenstein series is a very simple object. You know, it's a sum of divisors. So for some prime, it is 1 plus L to the K minus 1. And everybody knows that there's a prime that's 1 plus L is not divisible by P. Okay, so it would go. So I need to, of course, this Q expansion, actually I need to do, really do over the prime to P level base, the Igusa tower over that I actually need to do. But basically the main idea comes out just for out of this theorem. So I explain how to prove that this theorem. You know, I need the action of this row alpha. And um, so I, I, I want to not just a finite level elliptic curves, I mean a finite level modular curves, but I, 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 not just this functor. This is, of course, you get a principal congruence sort of things, and you get a, over this base ring, the, the modular curve well defined. Uh, it's a smooth curve. Then I need to take a limit to have this guy act. So any any mod p mod n element two by two matrix acts on this moduli problem just by composing to the level structure. And then you take a limit, then you get a maximal compact of a del group, and obviously this acts on this projective block curve. The key point that the, the Shimura found is that this action is not limited to this compact subgroup, but it extends to this uh, ideal group, finite ideal group. And SL2, this is ideal there, and also rational element, positive determinant, preserve each geometric, geometrically reducible component. Okay? So this is a kind of great discovery. But Shimura's formulation is usually hard to understand, um, although I understood well. But anyway, there's a nice interpretation by the link. So why not you just make a level structure, the, the adelic sort of level structure you take. But then you model out not isomorphism, but isogenies. This trick is a very nice trick. It's a stupid trick, but nice trick. Okay. Then, when I was a graduate student, I started studying math um, uh, just after entering graduate school. And um, I started understanding this. And this trick, it took three or four days to understand. But anyway, it's not something difficult. OK, then you know the the. You take Tate module, so it's isomorphic to z hat square, and you invert uh, every integers. Then it is a there square. So you can have uh, this kind of level structure, and you can model out by isogenies. Then this limit actually classifies uh, the, the that kind of pair. And then you can compose this ideal element with this level structure, so you have a nice action on it. This is, this kind, of course, you can uh, do this Hilbert modular case or any PL type similar variety you can do. Now, I actually want to have a smooth base, so I <laughs> remove the level P, so I only take a limit. Um, over integers prime to p. So this, if you regard this pro curve over q, then it is a quotient of the original full limit by the p maximal compact subgroup. So for the level structure, I remove p from the there, and I take prime to p level. Okay. Then this extends to smooth pro curve over ZP by the theorem of Igusa. And um, so it classifies by the same Deren trick, this 
prime to pi isogeny it comes in, and you have this functor, and, 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 and um, that this curve classifies this functor. So prime to p element acts on this eta p. And you know, because I have a basis over O, and choice of the basis over O is just basis of O hat over z hat. That is just identification of the Tate module of this complex multiplication elliptic curve. So I basically, almost free, I get this level structure. Now, because I can compose any ideal like this with level structure, where actually it's a prime to p part only matters. So the complex multiplication induces an isogeny. Alpha is an element of M, right? You compose, then you get this regular representation. So this is a rational torus inside the, this adelic point. Because this is up to isogeny, right? So if your alpha is sort of prime to p determinant, these two objects is the same thing, so it fixes this XO, this point. And actually, you can quite easily show that this is the stabilizer of this point. If some action, this, this is just isogeny action, brings XO to XO, it has to be induced by the isogeny, self-isogeny of elliptic curve. And you, you, you can only have that inside the, your imaginary quadratic field. So there, therefore, this is a stabilizer of XO. Now, uh, our, our case, the, the periodic place is only two primes, Gothic P and the Gothic P complex conjugate. And this P bar side, my choice, is et al over this W. And therefore, you can identify this W, the residue field is algebraically closed characteristic P. So this is isomorphic to the mu P infinity. So once you fix this by Cartier duality, you get another free, right? So I have sort of, I have chosen level structure outside P just because of the choice of the basis of O over Z. But here at P, I have to do fairly careful choice. So I do this way, okay? So in this case, the action of Self-isogeny alpha, the, the element in the imaginary quadratic field, on the eta p is just by multiplication alpha. And uh, for, because this complex conjugate of Gothic p is et al, so the et al part, it acts by its complex conjugation. Then this is the definition of XO, basically. I, I'm sort of repeating. Then I can move that to A by the action I already explained. You compose this guy inverse, and you get a point associated to ideal cosic A. OK. So um, now this is a theotate coordinate thing. So you look at the formal completion around your point XO. Now I just write X for XO. This point, I, I regard, it's a maximal ideal in the sense that it is, it is F point, the residue field, algebraic closure, algebraic closure of FP. Okay. Then this uh, formal functor, A going to Y hat A for profinite local algebra A with algebraically closed residue field over W, it just bring E to A to the set of elliptic curves whose reduction module P is exactly this X O. So it's a deformation functor, formal deformation functor. Okay. Then the key point of the Seattle theory is that this Object, this is the elliptic curve, 
but it is actually determined by the extension sequence of the connected component getting into the parasitate group at P and getting out to at our quotient. So it is actually extension one of these two objects. One is mu P infinity and the other is at our QP over ZP. Then the sort of very clever trick this extension one actually getting down to just a home, the linear homomorphism by a certain argument. So e, e, this is x, not x, this is e, okay, it's a typo. So actually the action on this row alpha is kind of obvious, it acts by alpha here, it acts by alpha complex conjugate here, but it's a home, so it, it, its action is alpha to the one minus c. A and because of this, you know, you take a, this is qp over zp, and having values in this mu p infinity, it's just a projective limit of this mu p to the n, so that, that is a formal group of gm, a and that, in that way, you get a certate coordinate. Of course, this coordinate depends on my choice of identification of this, uh, connected component with mu p to the infinity. But once you made it, the other side is just a Cartier dual. So uh, you get this, okay? So um, I pick a irreducible component containing this XO and I just define the skew sort of diagonal inside I, as I said, rho alpha, alpha is an element I wrote stupidly r, but this is O. Okay. Japanese can't pronounce distinction of r and l, and it's kind of funny, I can't even distinguish r and o. <laughs> okay, so I have the skew diagonal, and as I said, the rational element with positive determinant preserve the irreducible component. So it stays inside this. So you have this diagonal sub-variety. So you consider the product. This H, as I said, actually the class number of um, ring class group of conductor P. Actually, So I take um, sub-variety, it's a sort of induction because I need to compare each of them, but I can do one by one. So I suppose that it's first n minus one projection is dominant and, and the last projection is dominant. And suppose this is stable under the diagonal action of periodic open subgroup of this uh, rational group. Then you might have to permute first n minus one factors, <coughs> but if H is proper closed irreducible subscheme, really different from the product, then it is something like this. This is a sort of proven case of the principle of all chai. Um, Hecke invariant sub variety of a mod P similar variety is a similar sub variety. However, the these geometers usually use a lot of Hecke correspondence. I can only use is just uh, this rho alpha kind of things. So it's a little bit more difficult to prove this. Um, for example, you know, the, the Hilbert modular case or elliptic modular case, it doesn't matter actually, the difficulty is basically the same. And I don't think these people can prove it in the general CM point for the unitary similar variety or symplectic similar variety. But for example, if you start with something like, you know, hypersymmetric point, it's not something hard. Hypersymmetric, that means, you know, the, the, for example, in UNN, the, it is a product of elliptic curve, the, the, uh, the same elliptic curve. So it's a huge endomorphism. Okay, so well, I might have some time to explain this, but I just take this for the moment. 
So, as I suppose I have odd class number, in the even case I have to do a little more sort of technical thing. So I regard this to be ZP cross, where strictly speaking, it could be an extension of this, but I forget about it. And um, this, as an automorphism of GM, as I said, y hat is a GM hat. A and GM hat having just a raising power to the A automorphism, that's the only formal group automorphism of GM hat. Then I take a stock at OX. This YP I'm actually considering over FP. So I said mod P, FP, not FP, F, I mean the algebraic closure of it. Then I consider, I, I mean this is just a power series ring, F double bracket T, the, the infinitesimal, I mean, a fine ring is. So I just make a tensor product of the algebraic stocks. And I bring the function here into this by just applying this uh, automorphism. You get algebra homomorphism, this algebraic ring, into this formal power series ring. Then obviously, you know, raising t to the sum power commute with this algebra homomorphism because this is anyway the power. Right? So if you have a non-trivial kernel, what I want to prove is that this is actually injection. Then I get independent theorem, right? Because this is algebraically independent H factors then. So I suppose you have a non-trivial kernel. Then the Zariski closure of this kernel inside this I, I O, I mean I component containing XO to the H, it's stable under the action of this. So I can use that principle of the Hecke invariant sub-variety of Shimura variety is a Shimura sub-variety thing. Then by proposition, the ratio of this, it's delta alpha beta. So the ratio of this is alpha over beta. So it has to be there. But this is a representative set of class group further projected down to this bracket thing. And therefore, you get a contradiction. And so everything match, uh, h is equal, I mean, kernel is zero. And you get this algebraically independent over f. So the conclusion is just something. Um, You have basically this expansion, right? And by Q expansion computation, everybody can do this is Eisenstein series. Although I should say that in the Hilbert modular case, it's a little tricky. Uh, I once made an error. I usually don't make a computational error, but, but anyway, Hilbert modular case is a bit hard, but anyway, you can do. And, um, so this is a linearly independent over f, and therefore p doesn't divide in w double bracket t. Or this guy mod p is the Taylor expansion of uh, the modular form E, and therefore it doesn't vanish by Q expansion principle. Okay, so this is the story over imaginary quadratic field. I should say that over the a Hilbert modular case, if M is not an imaginary quadratic field, then something funny happens. I mean, the, for example, you know, the, the imaginary CM extension could be unramified everywhere. Then its automorphic induction does not have full support as a, as a function automorphic form, does not have full support over all uh, the, the ideal classes because norm of uh, everywhere unramified guy inside the class group is smaller than full class group. Uh, and therefore, strange things happen. And um, then for such kind of cases, this could be actually positive. 
And if you just plug in this gamma to decay, it's just the same amount you get. So you can't do much. So I, when I first wrote this analysis paper, I didn't know how to do that. But actually, if you plug in the root, p power roots of unity, then it goes down this way. That means you know you move around zeta, so the full d plus one variable thing, the mu invariant, still zero. I proved in the imaginary case I didn't need this x, and for doing this uh, Hilbert modular case, if m is everywhere unramified in this very special case, I don't. Actually, the mu invariant of anti-cyclotomic things, I mean, as I said, if you specialize to some lines, then it could be positive. And actually, it is positive in some cases. But still, you know, this you can prove by this rather stupid trick that this is actually, it doesn't divide this full variable thing. This is not in my analysis paper, but it will soon appear in a composition. So that's basically the end of the story. But I have still 10 minutes. So I run out of all my slides. So now I start the usual classical lecture. Would you just raise this up? How, how you can raise this? Yeah. So I somehow survived all this computer business. So this Hecke invariant sub-variety things I would still do. So as I said, it's an induction process. But um, the starting point is probably most important. So I just have two components. Then I have a Hecke invariant sub-variety H. This is rho OP cross invariant. Any actually um, periodically open subgroup of this is OK, but it doesn't too much matter. And suppose that H two projections, left projection and right projections to I dominant. I suppose, and I suppose also the dimension of H is less than dimension of I times I. So it is actually 2, and this is 1, therefore. Then H is something like delta alpha beta kind of things. Of course, you can write that this is the same as 1 alpha inverse beta, if we want. So, so that I try to explain how you can prove this. So here's a residuity lemma of chi. So I, of course, suppose that this contains the, my center point xx. I would call it x square. Then I make um, formal completion along this x square. And it is still invariant under this uh, group. Then the chai proved that this is a union. So you know, I had. That is, I x hat is g m hat. Okay, so this i hat square, I can identify it with g m hat tensor z p z p square. Then there's a finitely many direct sum and rank one inside z p square. Of L direct summand and um, rank L 
is 1. And under this identification, it is just Vm at tensor Vp L. Mm, this is not so hard to prove, but it's a lot of hard um, power series manipulation. And um, so I take this granted. And uh, for simplicity, just suppose this h hat x square is gm hat tensor one, one copy. So it's something like, if you have a several copy, they, they are just intersecting transversely. So you just take um, a normalization of this, and you can do the basically the same argument. So I, I don't do multiple cases. So it, it, it's a picture is something like you have a two line of GM. And you, 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 your H hat is something like the line, yeah, two projection dominant. Then, basically, um, therefore, so h hat, so if I write t right or t left, the CRT coordinate, of left, no, right, and left factor, Then the equation of this h hat is something like tl to the a is equal tr for some a in zp, but not zero. Right? It's a slope a. Then I take these two projections I have, and I have a um, universal elliptic curve sitting over i, right? So I just pick its x to be a um, left projection. This is over h pi l star e, and y, that over h, is pi r star e. Right, so I consider this x times y over h. I look at this is a two copy of elliptic curve. Main point is that if endomorphism tensor the q of this x times y over h, you have two possibilities, obviously. M2Q, or Q square, right? Because this is um, over one variable thing. It's a basically a generic thing, so it doesn't have complex multiplication. In this case, you have an isogeny beta to y over h, right? Isogeny because this M2. Then if I write the, the, the left level structure, you apply beta, then you get a right level structure with something, G, two by two matrix. But this G, in this case, this G is, has to be rho of alpha because you restrict it to the center point, you have two XOs, and it's a self isogeny, right? And that means, basically, by the de definition of CRT coordinate, means that this H has to be delta one alpha. So I need to kill this case. Whether I can kill within two or three minutes, I don't know, but let's try. So suppose that 
that the endomorphism is q times q, then um, this x, you take up varsity theta group. You consider it over h hat first. Y p to the infinity you have. And basically, by this linearity, this t to, tl to the a is equal to t, either you have a morphism, so to speak, I call it a, defined over h hat. Okay? The point here is this a is uniquely determined. by its restriction to center point, so x, o. OK, so actually, this h hat, you can go down by it, it satisfied the descent property with respect to uh, stock at x, stock at O x x x squared. Probably. Well, how you can say h of O x squared? No, x squared. This is algebraic guy. So it's descent. In other words, there exists an open subscheme containing this x squared that you still have. Morphism of varsity theta group over u. This is open. You have a lot of points. It's not a formal object. Then, because it is QQ, the, the endomorphism of this guy is Q times Q. So you pick another primary different from P and look at the Tate module of L, of the product, then inside of this GL, right, the, the, you have an image of Galois action of KU separable closure over KU. And you take its Zariski closure. Then you use Zahin's theorem. This is a finitely generated KU, is a finitely generated thing. So you know that this G intersection uh, SL, SL is actually SL2 times SL2 because of Q times Q thing. In other words, you can pick a point UV here such that E U is non isogenous to E V. So different from Venus eigenvalues. On the other hand, you have a morphism of Barsotti Tate group here. It has to have the same from Venus eigenvalues. So it's a contradiction. And that's why I killed this second case. And that's how things work.